Hacker's Methodology, a Malicious Mindset. In this lecture, we're going to talk about the different steps of the hacking methodology. There are six steps to the hacker's methodology. We're going to perform reconnaissance, scan and enumerate the network, gain our access, maintain our access, and then we're going to place back doors and cover our tracks on our way out. These are the six steps that every hacking evolution tends to go through. We're going to cover each of them in detail further, and then we'll show you tools and techniques to use those. But in this lecture, we're just going to talk about a brief overview. The first step is performing reconnaissance. So in this case, we're going to do everything passively. We don't want to touch the victim network yet. Here, we're going to be looking at open source sites and the internet. So we're going to be scanning for things like understanding what their networks look like from their, their network ranges, their IP addresses. We might be able to find things like ports and protocols. We might find victim email addresses to launch a spear phishing campaign against. We're going to find out who owns their domain. We might find pattern of life on different employees. This is where we start looking and do spend a lot of our time. Most hacking evolutions take about 80% of the hacker's methodology is spent in this phase. Everything we do here is very passive, and we're going to be looking at everything from an arm's reach. We don't want them to know who we are and where we're coming from yet. Some of the techniques we use are things like dumpster diving, uh, internet harvesting, domain information gathering. Uh, we'll be receiving any emails we can find. We'll be checking social media and establishing those patterns of life. The second step is where we start getting active. It's called scanning and enumeration. So here's where we might be doing things like port scanning, actually reaching out and touching the network, finding out what ports are open and what services are on those ports. We'll do our enumeration where we can start figuring out are they using Windows or Linux or Mac. We'll figure out what versions they're running. If they're running a web server, are they running Apache, are they running IIS? These are all the things we're going to find out during our scanning and enumeration phase that's going to help us build our attack before we ever get into stage three. In our third step, we're doing our exploitation and we're gaining access. At this point, we're going to actually launch our attack. So we've spent probably 80 to 90% of our time between phases one and phase two at this point, and now we're in our third phase, and our third phase is where we're actually going to launch this attack. This is where we might actually throw an exploit, uh, conduct a social engineering campaign, something where we're being very active, and now our risk level has gone up because there's a possibility that the organization we're going after can see us and see what we're doing. At this point, we're either doing client-side or remote exploitation. This can be things like social engineering, launching exploits, uh, sending out malicious code that attacks a bug or a vulnerability. We could be putting out viruses or trojans, uh, all the different ways that we can go about it. And we'll go through some of those in this course. The fourth phase is we're going to do our escalation of privileges. So now that we've launched our exploit, we've gained our initial access. Usually we're going to gain access as a user. So for instance, if I do a spear phishing campaign and one of the users clicks it, it's most likely going to be someone in the generic pool, not a system administrator. So at this point, I want to be able to get system admin rights. At this point, I'm going to have to do something to get from a user level to a system or root level or a domain administrator. And I'm going to always go for the highest privilege that I can get. The way I'll do this is I'll use various exploits and bugs in the operating system, and we'll use those vulnerabilities to our own advantage. For a Windows environment, the golden ticket that we're looking for here is the domain admin. Now, once I've got those administrative rights, I move into phase five, which is maintaining my access. Just because I have one user account doesn't mean that I'm going to be able to stay in there because if the system administrators realize that I'm the bad guy, they can just delete that account and then I've lost my access. So instead, once I get access, I'm going to go and create several user accounts and I'm going to hide myself throughout the system. That way I can gain that persistent access where I can always get back to that network anytime I want. Some of the techniques I'll use here is I'll put network sniffers in there or key loggers so I can gain additional usernames and passwords. If I'm a domain admin at this point, I can create my own usernames and passwords um, and create new accounts. Of course, it's better to steal somebody else's because then it's easier to blend in because it's a legitimate user. And again, our goal here is to maintain persistent access. That might include punching some holes in the firewall so that we have ports that are open and listening for our return when we want to come back. Finally, the last thing we're going to do in phase six is we're going to hide ourselves and we're going to cover our tracks. So at this point, we've created some additional accounts. Now we're going to put some back doors in, and we're going to start going through and clearing out those log files. If there's information we want to steal, this is the point where we're going to start exploiting that information and start downloading it and exfiltrating it. At this point, we might install a root kit or a back door, and this way I can always get back, and that, again, maintains that persistence like I was doing in phase five, but for the long term. A lot of hackers and attackers at this point have their fingers in a lot of different networks, and they don't always go in and steal everything right away. They might go in, lay the groundwork, and then sit dormant for a while, and then they'll take the information they want or use that network for some other nefarious purpose. And so as you can see, as we've moved through these six phases in the operation, we went from the passive collection reconnaissance 
then we started getting more and more active. And as we actually get onto the box in stage three and four and five and six, that's where our risk level goes up because if I'm on the box, there's a chance that I can get caught by the system administrator. So I have to be very careful in where I go and what I do so I don't set off any alarms and trigger any alerts because I don't want to get caught. I want to be very quiet and very sneaky as I go in and take the information that I want and meet my intended purpose.